This is my review of Dr. Stone, Chapter 110, Beauty Science, and call to the gods themselves, a new candidate for best girl has arrived, Jin Rolina! I'm, I'm actually a little terrified at how beautiful they managed to make her. Uh, so that was uh, definitely unexpected. I'm not quite sure how long she'll be able to pass for a girl, but uh, that's really going to be interesting when he gets into the harem and uh, he's called into the master's room. Uh, best case, he gets murdered. Worst case, the master's cool with it. So yeah, besides all of that, this chapter did feel more like one of the original chapters. More like what it was way back when, before they had all of their fancy science mat materials and techniques and all that. So, I mean, yeah, they have uh, sodium hydroxide and sulfuric acid here. But the mo doing most of what they're doing here with coconuts and honey and jasmine... They make shampoo, conditioner, perfume, glittery foundation, and lipstick. All uh, very impressively, I might ask. They did a good job here, mainly with coconuts. So they finally managed to get shampoo for the first time in their lives. They shampoo Kohaku's hair, and uh, nothing really changes. Turns out that shampooing it actually makes the hair rigid and stand up, so they need conditioner, which makes it silky, silky smooth. Uh, from there, they get glitter and makeup and foundation and all of that. And, uh, Kohaku, you are now literally the most terrifying thing in this entire series. And there is a guy who can turn people to stone. Your, your, your face here is more terrifying. Thankfully, uh, Amaryllis apparently is a master at uh, makeup with her uh, limited material she's had her whole life, so she's able to... Turn Kalako into, I, I'm not going to lie, a very beautiful girl here. I don't think it's the same dress she was wearing before, but it all seems to fit her very naturally. I like it. She, she looks really good, and I like it. Ay. So, then they decide to do the same thing to everyone else, and... It, it doesn't go well. I, I mean, really... I mean, Sanko just looks plain uncomfortable, and his voice... Yeah, it's pretty obvious he's not a girl. Uh, Jen is pretty good. I mean, he looks kind of cute, I guess. And he can mimic his voice to sound like anybody, so it's not a big deal. Unfortunately, apparently he's a little too tall to pass as a girl, which... I really don't think he's all that tall, but... I think that was just their excuse for not including him. And pretty sure Kohaku's taller than him. I'm actually not sure right now. And then Soyuz is just... It's just freaking terrifying. I, I don't even know why they bothered trying to dress him up, but... It should have been obvious from the beginning that that was not going to work at all. So then they move on to Jinro, and... Uh, I'm not going to lie. He's, they did a very impressive job making him cute. Very impressive job. And uh, I'm just... I'm looking forward to the master or the old guy or just Mozu finding out. You're a boy? No! Though, uh, heck, maybe he, uh, won't consider that a deal breaker. That's really be interesting, though, uh, poor Dinner. He's gonna try and tell the story when he gets back. I selflessly broke into the enemy camp and managed to steal the goods, and then someone will p pipe in. Yeah, but weren't you dressed like a girl the whole time? Oh my god, that's just going to be, uh, that's going to be interesting. Curious if, uh, he's dressed all the way, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Are you wearing pantaloons, sir? <laughs> oh my god, that's... Yeah, so that's going to go very poorly, because I have a very strong feeling that they might only end up taking General Lena, which, yeah, that'd be bad, that'd be very bad. Like, Kohaku was going to punch Mozu in the face, and he'd be like, you're not beautiful, and walk away or something. And so, Jin Rolin is the only one they take. That would actually be terrifying. Anyway, the old guy from last chapter is on a very high alert right now, making sure that nobody managed to escape from the boat, and that the thing was actually a beast, not something else. I mean, they use the tires to make fake tracks to lure him away, but this could definitely be an issue down the road. I mean, they're hiding in a cave right now, so it's not a big deal. They're definitely not going to be spotted or found, like, ever. 
But if he is on high alert, if he does think there are intruders, he, he could be extra strict investigating these people, investigating each of the candidates for the harem and say, what village are you from? And ch interview the villager saying, so he's part of your village. So she's part of your village, right? Which could be a big issue. So yeah, next week, uh, harem selection. That's that's going to be weird. That's going to be very, very weird. But uh, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Will Jean Rolina pass the uh, buck? Will she make it into the harem? Will, be, will she be the only one? Uh, be sure to like, subscribe. Until next time, peace.